precious ransom come. What else would you like to hear? Three forty nine. Three forty nine. Let's again do one and four. Three forty nine. I don't consider a favorite. There are so many and so few weeks to sing it. It's almost not fair. 357. 357. O come, O come, Emmanuel. It is hard not to sing all eight. Do you guys know the history behind this hymn? The last uh, seven days before Christmas at Matins, which means the, the morning of the 24th, and the, the, those seven days, no, I'm sorry, I said Vespers, the 23rd and back, seven days, at, they would sing an antiphon before and after the Magnificat in Vespers. And the antiphons you see there on the right-hand page, that's the translation of the original antiphons. And they were rewritten into this beautiful hymn by uh, my favorite translator, J.M. Neal. Um, and not only that, but if you take, it's really neat, if you take the first letter of the original Latin of each of them and write it down. When you read it backwards, it says, tomorrow I come. It's, to have written the whole thing and include that little detail in there, I just think is awesome. And so it's, it is hard not to sing them all, but let's sing uh, uh, one, five, and seven.
Who's got one? Three forty. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. Now, which tune did you want? 340 and 341 are the two different tunes. 340 is, lift up your heads. The, most, the better known one is 341. Let's do 341, uh, 1 and 5. for about one more. While you're thinking, is by chance St. John's treasurer here? <laughs> yes. If you would see me after the service, I've got a check you need to take care of for us. It's an ever challenge at the Reformation service. Those offerings go to the, the circuit, usually to pay for the speaker and things like that for the Reformation, Reformation service, but we get checks made out to the individual, individual churches, have to route them back through the treasurers. So we got to just take care of business. One last one. 338. Well, why don't we sing just one and two of that one?
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory, of it, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised. With your voices forever, O Son of God, O Giver of life, may you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and light in our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet, and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let 
us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Psalm 26. We will pray the Psalms responsively by whole verse. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, try me. Test my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on the lower end, in the great assembly of my blessed Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 45. My heart overflows with a pleasing thing. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and majesty. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Hear, O daughter, and consider, and incline your ear. Forget your people in your father's house. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts, the richest of the people. And many come. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the ten- Romans, the 10th chapter. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have. For their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from Matthew, the fourth chapter. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, 
and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, making, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew. It's actually kind of nice. This year, three of the four Wednesdays of Advent fall on feasts. Feasts of saints of the Church. That great cloud of witnesses that we have surrounding us. Part of our extended Church family. And often parts we really don't know very well. What a blessed chance we have then to get to know three of them. Tonight we learn of St. Andrew, the first called. St. Andrew who was crucified on an X-shaped cross. And it is by the feast of St. Andrew that the beginning of Advent is marked, for it's the Sunday nearest feast of St. Andrew. It's also four Sundays before Christmas, but it is symbolic that St. Andrew marks the beginning, even as he is crucified, as our Lord was. This is not just a Lenten theme. It is very much at the heart of Advent as well. There were some Greeks seeking Jesus. Andrew doesn't try to fill in for it. He doesn't even try to present Jesus himself. Jesus is there. So what does he do? He takes the Greeks to Jesus. It seems like a no-brainer. But perhaps we can learn from it. There's a boy who has five loaves and two fish. It's not much, and it's sure not enough to feed all these people. So what do you do? Jesus is there. Take him to Jesus. Simon, Andrew himself knows Jesus. But he has a brother, Simon, who doesn't yet. Andrew recognizes they have found the Messiah. Never mind that, in truth, the Messiah found them. But they recognize him. They know this is the one they have been waiting for. This is the salvation of Israel. And Simon doesn't know him, so what does he do? He goes and gets Simon. And he brings him to Jesus. You catch a theme here. Simon's solution to every problem, I mean Andrew's solution to every problem, seems to be, take him to Jesus. It's really a good solution. Various different situations. Some, wanna, some are seeking Jesus. One is offering his food, but it's not enough. Another doesn't even know of Jesus and has to be gone too. In any case, he takes him to Jesus. So what does St. Andrew have to teach us? Well, when we encounter people who are seeking Jesus, take them to Jesus. 
We all need Jesus. Not everyone is seeking him. But some are. For whatever reason. Whatever part of their life, whatever event, whatever fear, whatever tragedy, whatever curiosity God is at work using, whatever tool the Holy Spirit is manipulating right now, like a master craftsman, they're seeking Jesus. And we're not sure how to give them Jesus what they need to hear, what we should say, we're just not sure we'll get it right. Well, maybe we need to step out of the way and take them to Jesus. Take them to the Word. Take them, take them to the proclamation of the Word. Take them where Jesus is there for us. The boy has the five loaves and two fish. It's just not enough. We have a problem we can't solve. We have something we just know we can't handle. Take it to Jesus. Knowing that whatever he does with it is right, is good, and is for our good. Or we know somebody that doesn't yet know Jesus. And we're back in the same boat. We don't know what to say. No fisherman pun intended, by the way. We're in the same boat as we were before. Whether they're seeking him or not, we don't know quite how to deliver Jesus. Maybe we need to step out of the way and simply take them to Jesus. When Jesus is there, take them to Jesus. It's too bad, isn't it, that Jesus isn't here anymore? I mean, this worked great before the Ascension. It worked great when they knew where he was. And he wasn't that far away. Wouldn't it be great if we still had Jesus? But what does the Scripture say? The Word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart the word of faith that we proclaim. The word of faith is never that far away. The word of faith is here. The word of faith is in you. And where that word of faith has been received through the ears and believed in the heart, as Luther says, where faith is, there Christ is present. Jesus is here. Jesus is among his people, in his church, in his body, in his, with his bride. Jesus is here. And regardless of the situation, we all need the same thing. Whether we understand their situation or not, we all need the same thing. <laughs> Whether we're going through completely different problems or joys, we all need the same thing. It doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter our economic situation. It doesn't matter whether our life is going well or poorly. It doesn't matter whether we're married or single. It doesn't matter whether we're white or Hispanic or black. It doesn't matter. We all need the same thing. We need forgiveness. We need salvation. There may be a lot of other things that would be great, that would be helpful. We might even put in the need category. But at the bottom of it all, we all need Jesus. So let us receive with meekness the gospel preached by St. Andrew and all of those who are sent. As it is said, how can they preach unless they are sent? Let us hear the gospel preached by St. Andrew, whom our Lord sent 
and all others whom he has sent. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word, and the word has become flesh and dwelt among us. Wouldn't it be great if we still had Jesus? Well, yes, it is great for living here in us and among us is the Word made flesh who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God. We stand for the Magnificat.
Jesus chosen one I am blessed to call you son I see the Father in your eyes God's only Son Who's born this night You fill our hearts with peace A Savior to a world in need You bring us all Joy, the holy child, but my precious boy. Oh, sweet Jesus, chosen one, I am blessed.
This is the season, count it all joy. Jesus was born, a precious boy. The birth of a Savior, the birth of a King. God sent His Son, great news He will bring. Even the angels sing of His birth. He is the reason we celebrate on this earth. We stand for prayer. <coughs> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew and Lee, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For Barak, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, for those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present, who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord.
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Thank you.